everyone. Welcome to the session on basic hand stitches. In this session, we will learn and practice the steps in the making of a few common basic hand stitches. It is very important to learn hand stitches to understand the process of garment making. As the term suggests, hand stitches are made by hand using needle and thread. In fact, before the invention of sewing machines, garment making was done entirely by hand. Even today, haute couture garments make use of hand stitches extensively. Learning hand stitches will be very useful for doing basic sewing of garments. Popular uses of hand stitches include basting or tacking, finishing of garment hems, attaching buttons, fasteners, and also for doing embroidery. Hand stitches are also found to be more suitable for sewing delicate fabrics. Before learning how to make the hand stitches, we must keep in mind few points which will help you in making a neat hand stitch. A hand stitch is usually done using a single thread, but sometimes we may also need to use double thread depending on the stitch and its use. For example, for attaching buttons or hooks, we use double thread to make it more secure and strong. But for simple tacking, using a single thread is sufficient. In the case of heavier thread, only a single strand of thread can be used instead of taking a double strand. Another point is that the length of the thread used in making a hand stitch should neither be too short nor too long. A very long thread will easily get entangled and unmanageable while a very short length will necessitate frequent rethreading. Normally, the preferred length for hand stitching is between 18 to 24 inches. Even the hand needles come in a wide variety of length and thickness. We need to select the right type of hand needle to suit the task. Usually, finer needles are used for light and delicate fabrics and finer tasks such as attaching beads and sequins. Sharps are those needles which have a sharp point and round eye. These are used for general purposes such as sewing, mending, applique work, etc. Cruel needles have a longer eye and are used for embroidery work. There are also many other types of needles available for specific tasks. We must choose the right kind of needle for the specific task. Now selection of right thread color is also important. Using a contrasting color thread for basting so that the thread remains visible for easily locating the stitch line which can be removed afterwards is important. For doing hemming where you want the thread color to match the fabric, you should choose the thread color which is one shade darker than the fabric color. However, in the case of embroidery, you are free to choose the thread color based on the design. Let's now look at the various types of hand stitches. Hand stitches can be broadly classified into functional stitches and decorative stitches. Functional stitches are used in the garment making and finishing processes. Functional stitches may be further divided into two subcategories, temporary stitches and permanent stitches. Temporary stitches are those stitches which are placed only for a short period of time and they are ultimately removed during the final finishing of the garment. We use these stitches to hold the fabric pieces or fabric edges in place to enable proper final stitching after which these temporary stitches are removed. Basting or tacking is the most popular stitch in this category. Permanent stitches are the final stitches that stay on the garment permanently. 
They may be used either for joining the fabric pieces together in the garment, for example, backstitch, or they may be used to provide finishing to the fabric edges. For example, hemming, blanket stitch. These are used for preventing the raw edges of the fabric from fraying. The second category of hand stitches is that of decorative stitches. They are mainly used for surface ornamentation to add beauty and appeal to the fabric. They are also referred to as embroidery stitches. Examples include chain stitch, stem stitch, herringbone stitch, etc. Before learning the steps in making any hand stitch, we must first know how to thread a needle and the ways to put knots on the thread. For threading the needle, first cut about 18 to 24 inches length of thread. Avoid breaking the thread manually as it would make the edges rough and making it difficult to pass the needle uh, to pass the thread end through the eye of the needle. Even when cutting the thread with scissors, cut the thread in a slanting direction so that the tip of the thread is sharp enough to easily pass through the needle's eye. Then hold the needle between the thumb and the first finger of one hand with needle eye at the top. Pick up the cut thread holding between the thumb and first finger of other hand and push the sharp tip of the cut thread through the eye of the needle. Then pull the inserted thread tip from the other side to securely thread the needle. Basically threading a needle involves putting the thread end through the eye of the needle. Depending on the task, as we have already discussed, a single or a double thread may be used. For ease in threading, sometimes a needle threader can also be used. It is important to properly secure the beginning and ending of a stitch. At the same time, the way of securing must be as inconspicuous or invisible as possible. The thread ends at the starting point and the finishing point can be made secure by applying any of the following methods. You make a knot each at the starting and ending point of a stitch, placing the knot under the outer side of the fabric or by locking the stitch at the beginning and at the end by looping the thread around the needle and pulling it tight. Usually it is advisable to not put a knot in the thread or keep it as fine as possible so that it doesn't add bulk or appear unsightly. If a knot has to be put on the thread, there are three ways to do that. The first method involves putting a simple knot at the end of the thread and trimming the extra thread beyond the knot. Keep the knot small and fine. Another way of putting a knot in the thread is to roll the end of the thread once or twice on the first finger and then twisting it between the thumb and first finger and gently pushing the twisted edge downwards resulting in a knot. Trim the extra thread beyond the knot. The third method of putting a knot on the thread is to first place the end of the thread parallel to the needle, then holding the needle eye and thread end together with the right hand and rolling the thread two, three times over the needle with your left hand. With the left hand, gently pull the needle upwards and push the rolled thread downwards 
over the entire length of the thread thereby forming a knot towards the end. Now cut the loose hanging thread with the scissors. So knots made at the starting and ending points of a stitch need to be hidden from view by placing them in between layers of the seam allowance, hem allowance etc. In order to prevent finger injuries during hand sewing, particularly while pushing the needle up or below, a thimble is worn on the middle finger. It is also necessary to ensure that the thimble fits the top of the middle finger correctly. Now we will learn how to do each of these common stitches. We will start with temporary stitches. We will learn how to do basting or tacking stitch. Basting stitch is also called kacha tanka in Hindi. It is mainly of three types, even basting, uneven basting and diagonal basting. Even basting. In this case, the stitch length remains equal at the top side and opposite side of the fabric. To do even basting on a marked seam, first push the needle up from the wrong side of the fabric at the starting point. Then push the needle down at a distance of one fourth of an inch from the starting point. Then push the needle up at a distance of half inch from the starting point so that the stitch length is one fourth of an inch on either side of the fabric. Repeat the same sequence to complete the even basting stitch along the marked seam. Even basting is normally used in curved areas such as necklines before hemming or machine stitching is done. Even basting hand stitch is also called running stitch and it is used in embroidery as well. Another variation of basting is the uneven basting stitch in which the stitch length is longer on the right side and shorter on the wrong side. The process is the same as that of even basting except that the distance between the stitches and stitch length remains uneven in this case. Diagonal basting is made by placing a series of long and slanting stitches that are parallel to each other. This stitch is particularly useful for holding layers of fabrics as in the case of pleats or holding interlinings so that the layers do not slip out of place during final stitching. All these temporary stitches are later removed once the actual machining or permanent hand stitches are done on the garment. We will now learn how to do few of the common permanent stitches. We will cover plain hemming, invisible hemming and back stitch in this category. Simple or plain hemming stitch is used for hemming folded edges around the hem lines, neck lines, etc. This stitch is done from left to right. In the first step, push the threaded needle out from inside the fold where the hemming is to be done and secure the starting point with a knot or by taking a few small stitches. In the next step, keeping the needle slanted towards the left, scoop up the main fabric very close to the folded hem by inserting the needle and pushing it up at the shortest possible distance. This stitch should pick up only one or few strands of the main fabric to make the stitch as invisible as possible from the outer side of the garment. In the third step, take the needle into the folded hem, keeping the needle slanted 
to the left and then push it up over the folded hem. In the fourth step, take the needle slanting diagonally to the right by about one fourth of an inch and scoop up a few strands of the main fabric close to the folded hem and repeat the sequence till the hem stitch is completed. The hemming stitch should be as fine and inconspicuous as possible. Even on the right side of the fabric, only fine dots should be visible. To make the plain hemming even more inconspicuous and invisible or blind hemming stitches done, which makes the stitches invisible from both right and the wrong side of the garment. Blind hemming stitch is similar to plain hemming and is used for similar tasks. The main difference is that the blind hem stitch remains almost invisible from the right and wrong sides of the garment. There is also a difference in the direction of the stitch and is done from right to left. In the first step, push the needle from inside the rightmost edge of the uh, hem and secure the starting point by taking a few small stitches. Keep the stitch line close to the folded hemline. In the next step, push the needle to the left for about half inch and pick up as little fabric as possible from the outer fabric. In the third step, bring up the needle about an inch from the starting point and push it down under the folded hem, leaving very little distance from where the needle was brought up. In the fourth step, move the needle under the folded hem for the same half inch and pick up as little fabric as possible from the outer fabric. Keep repeating this sequence of needle movement till the hemming is completed. Another important permanent hand stitch is the back stitch. It is a strong, and secure stitch and is used in seam locations which cannot be easily reached by sewing machines. This stitch derives its strength from the overlapping of the thread on the underside of the stitch. However, on the outer side, the stitch lengths will be evenly spaced. This stitch is made from left to right and is secured by small stitches at the starting point. To start the back stitch, take needle down at the starting point and then push it up, leaving the desired stitch length. In the next step, insert the needle down close to the point where the stitch was started. In the next step, move the needle along the underside of the fabric and bring it up leaving the same distance from the point of last upward thrust. Then push the needle down close to where the needle was pushed up for completing the last stitch. Repeat the sequence of needle movement to complete the desired length of the back stitch. Prick stitch or fine stitch is a variation of back stitch which is made in the same manner but are much smaller and finer in length. This stitch is used to attach sari falls or um, hand sewing zippers. Now, after learning these permanent hand stitches, let's now learn how to make some of the common decorative or embroidery hand stitches. Usually, the best results of hand stitches are achieved if the fabric is placed under tension in an embroidery frame or hoop. This way it is easier to get smooth and even hand stitches without the fabric getting puckered or pulled. Let us first learn how to place fabric on an embroidery frame. Separate the two pieces of the hoop. Place the inner frame on a flat surface or table. Lay the fabric face up over the inner frame. Put the outer frame over the fabric and inner frame, tighten the screw and pull the fabric until it is tight. Make sure to, to put the top screw towards the 
right side if you are a right handed person and on the left side if you are a left handed person. This will make it easier to tighten the screws while pulling the fabric on the frame. If the frame feels too tight, loosen the screw slightly and try again. If the fabric feels loose, remove the outer frame, tighten the screw a little more and try again. The tension of the fabric should feel fairly tight, ensuring that the fabric grain should not get distorted. Once you have achieved that, pulling evenly on all sides, straighten the fabric in the frame. The fabric is now ready for practicing hand stitches. We will cover these decorative stitches in this session. Stem stitch, chain stitch, herringbone stitch and blanket stitch. Stem stitch is similar to the reverse side of the back stitch. It is commonly used for creating any kind of embroidered outlines. It gets its name from the stem like look when it is done on a straight line. It is also very easy to make and is formed by a series of overlapping loops on the top side. The procedure of making a stem stitch is that you push up a threaded needle at the starting point, keeping the thread knotted at the end. Then push down the needle, leaving the desired stitch length from the starting point, retaining needle head in the hand and bring up the needle point at a place closing close to the starting point. Then remove the hand from the needle head. This is like scooping up the fabric between the ending and starting point of a stitch. In the next step, catch the needle point and pull it up completely. Then insert the needle point down away from the last downward insertion point, leaving the same stitch length and bring up the needle point close to the previously completed stitch. Pull the needle up and continue the sequence of needle movement for making stem stitch. Chain stitch. Chain stitch is another common embroidery stitch. Chain stitch is also an um, outline stitch which is also used for framing and embroidery design. Chain stitch is made by a series of chained loops. It can also be used as a filling stitch. One of the advantages of this stitch is its adaptability. The size of the stitch can be made lean or stout by pulling the loops tight or leaving these loose. To make a chain stitch, push up a threaded needle at the starting point, keeping the thread knotted at the end. Then creating a loop and holding the thread with the left thumb, push down the needle very close to the place where it was pushed up initially. However, do not pull down the thread completely. Leave the desired length of the thread on top of the fabric, which is required for creating a rounded or oval loop. In the next step, push the needle up leaving the desired loop length, ensure that the loop of thread left on top of the fabric lies below the pushed up needle point. In the last step, push down the needle close to the place where it was pushed up. At the same time, leave the same length of thread for forming the next loop. Repeat the sequence of steps to complete the required length of chain stitches. Herringbone stitch. Herringbone stitch is different from others as it is formed by two interconnected rows. It creates a pattern similar to interconnected crosses. These crosses do not however um, 
are not formed at the middle but at one quarter of the length of crossing lines. To create a herringbone stitch, we need to make two parallel lines. To make the herringbone stitch, push up a threaded needle at the starting point, keeping the thread knotted at the end at the start of any line. Take the needle diagonally to the other line and push it down. Then push up the needle to the left at a distance which is approximately one fourth of the diagonal which has already been created. In the next step, take the needle diagonally down to the bottom line to the right of the starting point. Then push up the needle to the right on the bottom line at a distance which is approximately one fourth of the diagonal which has already been created. Keep repeating the process to the desired length of the design. Let us now learn how to do the blanket stitch. Though blanket stitch is a decorative stitch, it is also used for finishing the fabric edges. It can be also used to finish edges of multiple layers. To make a blanket stitch, push up a threaded needle at the starting point, keeping the thread knotted at the end. In the first step, the needle inserted from one side to the other side of the edge and over the edge to form a loop around the edge. In the next step, the needle is inserted into the loop and pulled until the loop becomes tight. Then the needle once again is pushed from the start side to the other side leaving a new loop around the edge. The needle is then taken through the loop to tighten it. This process is continued as long as it is required. So whenever you do a hand stitch, check out the following points to ensure that you have done it properly. Are the starting and ending points secure and are without any loose threads? Is the stitch length fine and uniform throughout? Are the knots and small stitches invisible on the outer garment? Are the stitches neat both inside and outside? Are the thread ends and knots properly hidden between the fabric layers or in other construction details? Does the stitch use the correct thread type appropriate for the stitch, fabric and task? Is the stitch smooth? and free from puckers on both the right and wrong sides. If all these points have been taken care of, you have achieved a perfect hand stitch. I hope after this session, you will be able to practice these common hand stitches and will use them in your stitching projects. I will meet you in the next session with a new topic. Thank you.